Rub up your engines! Well, if you live in Detroit or any other place, people might be stealing your steering wheel to get to the airbag. Now, of course, people have been stealing catalytic converters for the precious materials inside them, right? Well, in Detroit, that's too much work, jacking up the car, crawling under, cutting off the catalytic converter. Now they're stealing the steering wheels to get the airbags and resell them. Now, over a two-day period in Detroit, a bunch of Equinox and Chevy Malibu steering wheels are stolen. Strange that it's those two, but that's what came out of it. Now, the airbags go between $200 and $1,000. They're pretty expensive. Obviously, it has something to do with wrecked cars. You know, you get your your car wrecked it's got to be replaced by the insurance company right so if these guys can get their hands on one a lot cheaper than that mark it up you know the body shops are going to be making money and of course if you really want to go the whole nine yards modern cars with modern steering wheels have all the electronic sensors and stuff on it they could even be taking them apart and selling the parts to them or like i said once cars get wrecked those blow off you got to replace them those are the thousand dollar steering wheels the ones with all the sensors and buttons and stuff on them they certainly weigh a premium i know guys years ago stole cars and they were told by the body shops here's what we want we want this car sometimes even get this color so we don't even have to repaint it beware now if you're worried get one of those clubs and i talked to a guy the other day he didn't know what a club was they bolt onto your steering wheel and then lock so it's much harder to steal them because to steal them you got to unbolt the metal bolt in the middle and the club blocks that so you'd have to cut the club off making it a harder job so instead of stealing your car they'll steal the one next to you the thing about keeping anything from being stolen is make your stuff harder to steal than the one next to you and they'll steal the one next to you sad but true george says what should i do with my toyota camry i have a 2000 toyota camry le with the 2.2 liter four-cylinder engine with 180,000 miles i bought from an independent mechanic said he rebuilt the engine with new piston rings and new cooling system since he said the car was overheating all kinds of problems now it's leaking oil well, the guy pulled it off, a new mechanic, and he said, hey, some of this was even glued on, and you need an oil pump gasket. Should I keep putting money into this thing or what? Well, the guy you bought it from is either a lying scumbag or a really crappy mechanic. He said he rebuilt the engine, right? If you rebuilt the engine, you would have changed the gasket on the oil pump. You would have changed the oil pump. You would have changed all kinds of parts. The guy gave you a line of baloney. And the geese agree in consortium here. The guy ripped you off. Ask the mechanic who's working on it. I'll say, should I go into this or just say forget it and get something else? Now, if the car's in decent shape and it's just the engine, get one of those used engines in Japan and have it installed. I've done that all the time in the past. Sometimes I can get those Japanese engines for a little seven, eight hundred bucks, throw them in, and most of them have 20, 30,000 miles because they don't drive much in Japan. You could go that route. But I don't think I would go any further with that engine because the guy was just lying to you, the first guy. Who knows what he actually did to the car, if anything. You don't want to depend on a junker that the guy sold you for the engine. But if the rest of the car is good, put another engine in. Still all says, am I stupid? I bought a new 2021 Subaru Crosstrek Premium. Automatic, no turbo, CVT, and a standard engine. Was I dumb for buying this? Did I make a bad choice? I don't think so. Subaru makes their vehicles a lot better than they used to. Their CVT transmissions in the newer ones seem to be excellent. Subaru is like Fuji Heavy Industries, a humongous Japanese corporation with some fantastic engineers. They now make and design all their own CVT transmissions, just like Toyota makes their own. Honda makes their own CVT transmissions. I'm not a CVT fan, but those are the best transmissions out there for CVT transmissions. So I don't think you did make a mistake other than you made a mistake buying a new car as far as I'm concerned. I would never buy a new car. I had a guy over here yesterday and he has two beautiful Acuras. Both of them are $38,000 brand new. He bought both of them with between 30 and 40,000 miles for one third of the price of the original car, like $12,000 each. He loves them. He's always bought used cars that way. If you buy a quality Japanese car, don't buy a new one buy a used one, save even more money. That's the only mistake you made. I would never buy a new car. It's stupid. They cost too much money. And there's plenty of good used ones out there. My advice is don't buy any car. If at all possible, sit. Because with the coronavirus stuff, the price of new cars is one. And then guess what happens? The price of used cars goes and follows it. So they're all too expensive now. So if at all possible, hold off, fix your old car and wait. It's like anything else. Waiting is smart. I'm thinking about buying a house here in Rhode Island. I'm waiting. They're greedy here.
They think 800 square foot shacks on the ocean are worth a million bucks. They're out of their minds. That won't last for long. Old Scotty will wait. When it come down, hey, I'll think about a good deal, but I'm not gonna go buy one now. I'm smart. So don't buy a car if you don't have to. Just Frank said, why is my 99 Expedition going through ignition coils? I got a 99 Expedition with a V8, 180,000 miles. It is a pending for misfire number seven. It's a coil I had replaced when I bought the car. I had all of them replaced then a year ago. Now it's doing the same thing on 7. I'm guessing it's the coil. If you're buying ignition coils for that thing, don't buy those cheap Chinese made ones. They're junk and they'll keep going out. You're getting a pending for number 7. So, put number 7 on number 1 and number 1 on number 7. Swap the coils. See what happens. And if it comes back to number 7, then either you got a wiring problem or you could have a problem in number 7. It's got a lot of miles. Could have a stick and valve. Could have worn piston rings. Could have a bad fuel injector. Lots of things can cause misfire. When you get one misfire code, hey, just swap that coil with another one. See what happens if the misfire moves to where you swapped it you know that's the problem always think logically don't start throwing a bunch of money out when you don't need to and since ignition coils are all individual these days simple to check swap them from one to the other and if the miss follows where you moved it to you know that's the bad part but what john says i got 2008 chevy impala it's a money pit and it's running hot i have two 2008 impellas why do you have two i wouldn't even have bought one one was taking better care of the other now the, my one is starting to run hotter it's not indicating overheat but it's running hotter than it should there's no codes or anything. Do you think it could be the cooling fans? Well, it could be a ton of things. Yeah, they're electronically activated. Now, here's what I'd advise doing. Unplug the cooling fan and run power and ground with jumper cables from the battery to the fan so it runs all the time. Then drive it around. If your problem goes away, sure, your cooling fans aren't working right. And in that case, what the heck? It's an old junky Impala anyways. Why not just put a toggle switch on it? When you're driving around town, just turn a toggle switch on so the fan runs the whole time. You'll lose like 1 50th of a mile a gallon fuel economy or something, some tiny little thing. Won't do all that much difference but simple fix right why not give that a try if that works they're complicated computer controlled systems you can spend a fortune sometimes it's the computer not working right you'd have to replace the computer if you can just put a toggle switch and wires on it what the heck try that with jumper cables first and if it runs fine great if not then you got a different problem and no one knows it's probably a blowing head gasket that's starting to blow just starting when they start to blow they get a little bit hotter and then when they finally blow it's too late and that's it and if you're curious if it's that, watch my video. How to tell if your head gasket's blown, Scotty. It'll show you how you can check it yourself. Remington Cole says, I need help with a Ford buyback. I got a 2011 Ford Fiesta. It was brought to the Ford garage three times, worked on it, still acts up. It has 171,000 miles. It runs in great shape besides the tranny problem. What should I do? How do they buy it back? Is it worth it? Should I drive it till the wheels fall off? Yeah, Ford's got a stinker thing on that. They did a class action suit, which they lost, and they came to an agreement that they either fix them or they buy them back, right? But the buyback thing is they can offer you basically whatever they want. See if they'll buy it back and what they offer you. They'll probably offer you a couple grand or something. If it still runs okay and you can drive it, drive it till the wheels fall off. That's the problem with these class action suits. They get lawyers involved. Well, we will pay anywhere from $2,000 to $25,000. Guess what? Every customer I have, they pretty much lowballed the $2,000, $2,500. And with 171,000 miles, I guarantee you they're not going to offer you hardly anything for that. So if it runs, what the heck? Drive it till the wheels fall off. Or if you're sick of it and they offer you a couple of grand sell it back to them from my experience with that mileage and being 11 years old i doubt that they're going to give you much for it that's the problem with this legal stuff they don't go into the real world where okay they're going to lowball everybody you know if they say we'll pay you between two thousand and twenty five thousand guess what they're going to offer most of the time two grand you know okay now they're bragging that the tesla superchargers have reached the twenty five thousand charger milestone so people can get their electric cars charged well let's break this down in the real world and not the fantasy world. One, they're not talking about how many stations there are. They're talking about how many individual units there are. There's a little over 2,700 stations worldwide, which include 25,000 charging units on the entire planet. Well, let's break that down just in the United States. That's the whole world, right? 25,000 units to charge them up. In the United States alone, there's over 1,680,000 gas pumps. <laughs> Uh, of course, a gas pump fills your car pretty fast. If they're all full, what does it take to fill a gas pump? Four or five minutes? There's a whole bunch more. They work a whole lot faster. Imagine if there were a lot of electric cars. You're going to be waiting because there's not enough charging. Or even a fast one might take an hour to recharge your car. Say there's three, four people in front of you. There's uh, five hours of your time wasted. This electric car stuff is total fantasy. They're just playing the game to try to get people to buy them, try to get governments to fall into this thing. And like I said in an earlier video, why would 
any business invest in charging stations when most of the charging of electric cars is done at home. They're not going to have much of a market. They're not going to make much of a profit. No businessman's going to invest in this stuff. And of course, let's say old Uncle Sam now with the new administration and is going to start putting money into these things. Ha! Government building things. Oh, what a quagmire that'll be. They can't even take care of the roads and bridges we have now and they're going to create a new infrastructure. Ha ha. That's all I got to say. I mean, think about it. They're bringing about 25,000 worldwide places that you can plug it in, individual charging stations, and there's 1,680,000 or more gas pumps in the United States alone. They got a long way to go before this stuff gets the mainstream, if ever. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.